what is the appeal of identity politics? I, I kind of want to ask you like the genesis of it, mm -hmm. uh, but I think maybe a more interesting question is why is it so appealing to people? It's easy. You know, it's like, uh, you know, show a little kid uh, a, a picture and ask him what colors are on the picture. Uh, this is red, this is blue, and this is white. You know, it's very easy to do that. And then if you align those colors with uh, attributes, then it becomes very easy to diagnose anything that you're looking at. So that's why uh, identity politics really, really works because for one, politicians aren't usually that smart and they're pretty lazy. Um, so they're, they have no interest in honing in on what really Americans want in a particular area, uh, trying to find some sort of middle ground. All that stuff is difficult. What's really easy is to say, I'm writing this law and it benefits black people, right? It's, it's very easy to do that, to use a population of people to, to leverage whatever you want to do. You know, we need to get rid of stoves because it hurts black people, right? So let's, let's change all these policies, right? And what does that really have to do with us? Um, so it's, it, it, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's the reason why they like identity politics is because it's incredibly superficial, it's incredibly easy. Um, and on top of that, I think the most important thing is that it works. Hmm. Yeah. How have you talked to people in your life whose identity is solely on my race? This is just who I am in every way. How have you tr tried to talk to them and understand them and get them to, to see what you're seeing? Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, especially since I wrote the book, uh, which has been, uh, I guess it's a couple of years now, uh, time flies. Um, you know, I, I came more to an understanding and acceptance. And there's there's polling that shows this. Um, Pew Research shows, I believe it's 74% of black Americans uh, see race or see their race as an essential part of their identity. So I can't change that, right? But what I can do is say, your race is your central part of your identity, but it doesn't have to be everything for all, all of movements, everything that you do in life. And, and so I, I don't want to take away um, the pride that comes from certain Black people about being Black. That's fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when that pride is being leveraged to hate other people, or it's to mm -hmm. uh, find some sort of way to have animosity towards other people for whatever reason. Um, that's my issue. And so for me, you know, as a, as a former IT guy, I look at exploitations. And what I notice is that race is used as an exploit uh, to manipulate people. And so if you hold a lot of pride about your race, and then someone comes over and, and points at an opposition, it points at an enemy, right? Points at an oppressor, you know, that's the word that we like to use, then they can manipulate you and get you to do whatever they want. You know, it's the reason why mm -hmm. why Joe Biden can come into Georgia and say this this reminds me of uh, Jim Crow. It makes you know this is Jim Eagle, right? To get black people supposedly riled up to have them fight for voting rights. Meanwhile, this last election, I believe, was the largest black voter turnout. <laughs> you know, so how did make yep. it make sense? Um, but <sighs> but that's that's the manipulation, and and this is why I left the Democrat Party. A number of years ago is because it became very very clear that it was always about manipulation uh, and i became an independent because i don't want any party to decide which way i go to find my my weakness my exploit to get me to do whatever they want just to be a loyalist mm. so I, I think race right. and identity politics is is one of those ways and i'm fearful that uh, the republican side might look at what's working on the other side and do it more Yes, 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 absolutely. Yes, that's the danger. Not only this, but the react, the counter to, and then the counter to that, and that's where the spiral comes. I hate to give this to you, Adam, I only got about two minutes, mm -hmm. but I want to jump to Tyree Nichols in Memphis here. Mm -hmm. And the big deal, of course, being made that he was killed by five black police officers. And I know people in Memphis and like, Tyree's mom is like, what, like, how could this happen? Our own kind, you get words mm -hmm. like that are thrown out there. What do you, how do you think of that? Um, Crappy people come in all colors. Evil has no skin color. And so evil people do evil things. 
And I think this is part of the problem. When we attribute evil and bad actors to supposed to look one particular way, then we, we hide ourselves from the other evil people who use that identity to cover up whatever they're doing. So if we look at black people and say they're incapable of being evil, you know, because they've been oppressed historically, then all you're doing is allowing evil people to do evil things even to us. Uh, and I think this is like the deeper, deeper part of identity politics. And, and we, we're seeing it here uh, in this situation with these officers. It doesn't matter that they're black. It matters that they're evil. They're immoral people. That's ultimately what matters. And I want more people to see that. Adam B. Coleman, fantastic. Thank you. Man, I'm grateful for you, Adam. Uh, keep up the wonderful work. Adam B. Coleman on Substack and get the book. Uh, wrong, or sorry, he's, he's the founder of Wrong Speed Publishing, and the book is Black Victim to Black Victor. Adam, wonderful. I hope we can talk again, sir. Anytime. Hey, thanks for watching that, that clip. This was an amazing special we did about identity politics and in, inspired by Black History Month. We talked about how we should really be teaching our history, and we touched on so many eternal themes, so many biblical themes because we're all wrong, right? There's definitely problems in this country, but we're searching for the answers in all the wrong places when uh, it's all in the Bible. And that's what, our that's what our podcast is about. It's called Politics by Faith, where we take the story of the day that's causing anxiety, like race in America, and then Tyree Nichols in Memphis, and all these stuff that's just causing anxiety and tension and division, and we talk about it from a historical and a biblical perspective and make the anxiety go away. So if you like that last clip, you'll love the podcast. It's anywhere you listen to a podcast called Politics by faith.